son of a bitch. <laughs> That's the way the video is going to open. Uh, so we just finished playing Watergate here, which is a game that I got into Math Trade a couple of months ago, and I've, I've now played it twice in the last week. Um, really love it. I can understand why this game is so uh, gets so much praise. It's really cool. Um, it's a it's a CDG. Um, a strategy card game that uh, is all about Nixon sort of like discovering Watergate, the Watergate scandal. And what I really think is cool is there's, um, well, first of all, it's full of interesting decisions. So every turn you're playing a card, you're either doing it to move these evidence tokens. So every turn you get three of these. It kind of reminds me of, like you said, you said it reminds you of Churchill a little bit where you're like playing tug of war yeah. over stuff. In 1960. In 1960. It's kind of a combination of those two games. But basically you get these evidence tokens here on this track. You've got the initiative. So who gets more cards every turn? And you've got these red and um, um, momentum tokens tokens and these kind of represent the momentum of your investigation both sides can win these at the end of a turn anything that's on your side of the track you're going to get for the nixon player he's trying to get five uh, momentum tokens and fill the nixon card over here and if he does that he wins the game the uh, the editor player who's playing the press also can get these and they start to unlock little bonuses uh, at the end of every turn so this this piece is pretty important and every turn you're going to play a card and you're either going to choose um, the ops value of the card which are these numbers here um, and you can then move an evidence token of that color towards you or you can move one of the two tokens the initiative or momentum towards you and you're going to go back and forth playing cards uh, and then at the end of the round wherever stuff lands you're going to get and be awarded you can also play a card for the event and a lot of these events are the famous people from the watergate era or uh, different events that have happened you can see john dean and actually in this game it turned out my first card play of the game i think was putting john dean on the board and then the editor player, they win the game by connecting these people. There's uh, seven of them, I believe. Uh, yeah, seven of six of them. Six, seven of them. And uh, you try to connect these people with the evidence tokens that you win to Nixon's picture in the center of this, like, conspiracy board. So I managed to get John Dean connected to Nixon pretty early. And you can see some of these evidence tokens are dual, dual colored, so you have some versatility in where you place them. Um, and then you're trying, to, you're trying to get two of them. So I got John Dean early, and then uh, you can see that the Nixon player blocked off a lot of the evidence leading towards him from other people. He managed to get some of these folks um, on his side. So Alfred Baldwin, for example, never came in, um, or never became an informant. He uh, stayed quiet. I did get uh, James McCord here, but what ended up winning me the game on the final turn, I got uh, Martha Mitchell in play. And there were just too many ways to get to Nixon from her once I played. So he was able to block this first spot here, but I ended up winning this blue evidence token on the final turn and placing it here. And you can see that it, it all connects. Martha Mitchell and John Dean all connected to Nixon. So the press ended up winning it. Uh, but it was very tense, very tight back and forth. And uh, this is a really cool game. This is like one of those like one hour, uh, tight CDGs that has like a lot of cool stuff going on. And it's very replayable based on like what, how the cards come out. What'd you think? I love this game because my favorite game is 1960. I love the flavor on these. Yeah. Uh, every every card has a little uh, to do about who they are, and I actually like playing Nixon and and cussing like Nixon <laughs> and being pissed off. And so I really love the flavor of this game. And yeah. if you don't know much about Watergate, there's a lot to learn. Um, yeah, I think that this is, I, I love this game as kind of like, almost like a filler. It's probably like a couple hours. Yeah, this would be a good game kind of like to close down a game night or to open a game night or something with someone. Yeah. Um, and I, what I like too, I got, I mean, I got this in a trade, so there's this promo pack, but if you play more than one game in a row, uh, this, if you lose the first game, I believe you get like an extra card into your deck, which might help you in the second game. It's really cool. There's a lot going on here. Highly recommend this if you get a chance to pick it up. Um, it's, it's certainly an interesting topic and a very cool implementation of mechanics uh, altogether. Okay, Bottos Con, day three. Board games, ice cream, beer around the table. This is our local vendor, obviously selling more stuff today. Gonna try and pick up what I said. Hello! Hello! Were you able to find more copies of W1815 yesterday? Uh, no. Oh. no apparently, we, we sold it. That was the last one. No, I literally, literally that was, the last one. Oh, brutal. Okay. Yeah, I had no idea. I thought we had a box full of them, and we had a box full of Helsinki. Got it. Yeah. Well, the search continues then. Yes. Okay, let's see what else is uh, happening around today. Tinner's Trail. That's pretty much all the rules. That's pretty much all the rules. Oh, yeah, this game again. What else did I feel like I'm missing something now. Oh, Beyond the Sun. So, um, Another game of that. They just finished actually playing um, it's your turn. You Forbidden play Stars, which is a game I own have yet to play. Uh, apparently it's going for big prices on the secondary market. Um, Glory and Empire, First Victories, Wellington versus Napoleon. This looks like something that's a prototype, maybe? Lock and load? Yeah, lock and load. Interesting. Napoleonic lock and load. 
I like the way the counters look. It's cool. I think I, was, I think Kev was talking about this. Uh, Hipshot was talking about this on his channel recently, or maybe it was Ardwolf. Map looks nice. <laughs> I'll have to. I'm interested in this. This is interesting. Looks like the yeah. This looks like a prototype. Very cool. Five against five. What does that mean? Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, uh, no worries. Looks like some uh, betrayal, D and D betrayal, about betrayal on the hill, betrayal at Baldur's Gate. Uh, still haven't played that game. Want to? Virgin Queen game. I see the Protestant player winning, followed closely by the Ottomans. Here's Seljuk with the new map. We were uh, in the middle of a, a scenario where I was doing a demo for someone. See if I can get some, not some glare on there, but uh, you can see we got Manuel Comdinas and Yosin Tarkaniotis driving off uh, Arasigi, the Sultan's brother-in-law, after he ravaged most of northern and north central Anatolia. Um, this was fun. Um, I, I lost a battle and I lost a lord to bribery. <laughs> Um, the Expanse board game. More Imperial Struggle. Looks like we got some skirmish minis over here. Oh, the Grizzled. We're playing the Grizzled, which is the World War One card game. It's a fun game. Very difficult to win. More Watergate. Nice. Play that this morning. Yeah. I won as the press. <laughs> <laughs> it does, yeah, a little bit. Time for Trump is still going. Every time I walk over here, I feel like the counters haven't moved. No, but it's still true. Yeah, it's, I know. Uh, absolutely. Lots, I see, there's a lot going on. Yeah, for sure. Well, I see actually the Germans have made quite a bit of progress down here. Yeah. Nice. Looks good set up. Yeah, it's great. Fire in the Sky finally being played. Another game of Twilight Imperium. I love the little clear state on for the fleets. It's very cool. One of my favorite games of all time. Smolensk still going. What turn are you guys on? Seven. Turn seven. How many are you playing? Just all 19. Wow. Nice. This has the goal. Yeah. The table. Uh, Richardson Marauders they were playing last night, still set up. Yeah, I guess that's we'll see what happens. Axis Empires, Total of Creed. Nice. A lot of World War II happening this weekend. A uh, game of brass about to be set up and played there. There are some games going on downstairs. They opened the other rooms, and I think we're probably going to be using them this weekend as more people are at the convention. We've got a decent number of folks here today. Um, this looks like Red Typhoon, yeah. Another World War II game. So that's what's going on. I'll be uh, checking in again later uh, and show you what's happening tonight. Hopefully you've been enjoying uh, what's going on at Game On, uh, and uh, thanks for watching. All right, we just finished a game of Brotherhood and Unity, uh, which I love this game, it's great. Um, I was playing the Serbs, so it's a three-player game about the Bosnian Civil War of the 90s. I was playing the Serbs, um, I had a really strong start, a pretty craptastic middle of the game. The uh, Bosniaks were coming on late. They took the airport. They, were, they freed up the airport and the Sarajevo surroundings. Um, I just had the greatest final turn I think you could possibly have in this game. I managed to knock out uh, this key city here to grab this province, which I needed to win. That was worth six points. Then I had another series of attacks with the help of some air power where I took, uh, I don't even know how to pronounce this, Gor Garage Day, um, which then... Yeah, Garage Day, and then I took out Srebrenica here, which then gave me uh, Semberia, Semberija, not sure how to pronounce that. Anyways, it, I was so far ahead on points. I'm at 65. I'm like 20 points ahead of everyone else. And the final card that the Bosniak player played 
was this Serbian uh, foreign attitude minus two, which is the way that the world looks at you here. And because I, I went from zero to seven in a single turn, because I attacked a UN safe area, I got a minus three penalty after I took it. So that was three, another one for the key, another one for this key, another one for this key, and then this, these two. The, the world has witnessed my atrocities. And uh, uh, from the jaws of victory, was defeat snatched it was an amazingly ridiculous epic ending to this i'm not even mad honestly like i i got too greedy i got too greedy all right fresh off my absolute disastrous loss to in brotherhood and unity even though i had the greatest turn of the entire game um there are some rooms they've opened up the downstairs rooms at the uh hotel let's see what people are playing in those do another walk there. Hey, look, the bar not only has a fire pit, but a giant Connect Four board. Gaming all the time. Let's see what we got down here. One single table with hand sanitizer. That's not a fun game. Or it is a fun game, depending on who you are. Northwest ASL Championships. ASL happening in there. What do we got in here? The Tamarack Room. Rising Sun. That, you know, his limitation of two is offset by the fact that that's actually four fours. Yeah. Okay. The minis look so good. Yeah. Come back in a while, there'll be a lot more on there. <laughs> Just an explosion of art on the table right now. There's a whole box. <laughs> He's not kidding. All right, back to the main floor. We'll take a little evening walk through. It's about 9 p.m. Dinner or after dinner for most people. We had another game of War of the Ring happening today with all of the minis. Looks like this is how they left it. The Corsairs, they're playing with the expansion. It looks like Minas Tirith is... Uh, fell, maybe? <laughs> and it looks like, uh, I, I know for a fact Sam and Frodo threw the ring into Mount Doom, which is there they are, which is pretty awesome. They won it. Looks like the shadow was... Look at all of the Dunlandings, the uruk -hai. Looks like the... Looks like Edoras. No, is that Helm's Deep? Looks like Helm's Deep did not get attacked. There's Edoras there. Looks like... Yeah, it looks like Saruman didn't uh, move in. The Elves of Lorien still alive. Total Creek still happening. World War II, 303 Squadron. This one's getting a lot of buzz lately. Air game. Still going at OCS. Smolensk. You can see the action has moved all the way to the far end of the map there. Project Elite. I'm not even familiar with that one. Uh, we got some Harry Potter going on over here with Jeff. Time for Trumpets still going strong, although they're at, probably at dinner right now, but it's pretty interesting to come check in on this every now and again. I keep joking that the counters haven't moved from where they started, but yeah, a lot of progress here for the Germans, especially over here. They are way up against the Allies. SPQR, Great Battles of History. Saw me play that at GMT. Indonesia. Oh, right. It's like a financial bidding game. Junta. Dune Imperium. That's what I was wondering if you were done. Uh, yeah, yeah, I had the, okay. I had the card. So really big box I'm version of Dune Imperium. Place. I might as well play that. Yeah, you are in second place. I might as well play that. Oh, hold yeah, on yeah. a minute. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a lot of buzz. Red flag over Paris. Yeah. yeah. This one, a shout out to Fred, whose game has made an appearance here at Game On. Fred, if you're watching this. There you go. Right on, Fred. <laughs> Did you guys just finish? No, we just started. No, just started. Just setting it up. All right, well. It'll be done in 30 minutes. There you go. Or less. Perfect. This is, so far, this has been a con of like 30 to, 30 to 45 minute two player games for me. Played some 300, played some Watergate. Nice. Yeah. Good luck with this one.
the crew mission deep sea uh, this is oh yeah this is the Napole lock and load napoleonics game tactical napoleonics i heard i heard good things when someone told me about this earlier this system earlier today it looks really cool um curious when they're gonna do play test probably tomorrow uh here's seljuk setup we're sort of part way through we're in the spring of 1069 we've had some interesting stuff happening here the the romans here's uh romanos He's uh, made his way down here to Germanicaea over the winter. He was able to winter in there, didn't have to go home. Uh, the Turks have ravaged a significant portion of sort of the eastern frontier lands, Syria, even all the way to Antioch. Um, but uh, they didn't, and, and they did a good job. They didn't lose any points on the first year. That sets them up really nicely for the for 1069. Unfortunately for them, uh, they had to disband Alp Arslan, who's over there, who's their best leader. And so he's not coming back for another four seasons. But that actually matches the history. Alp Arslan didn't campaign in Anatolia in 1069, uh, I don't believe. And so the, the Seljuk player only has Sanduk and Afshin, who are sort of the more step raiding lords, uh, nomadic uh, warlords, rather than sort of like strong military commanders. They've only got uh, Turkey horses, you can see here. So he's going to have a big challenge. They're up here in Ani in Armenia. And uh, he's got to get, by the end of the year, he's got to get uh, 15 spaces covered under these ravaged, ruined, or conquered markers. And he's going to be facing off against a pretty strong Byzantine force, Roman force, the Emperor, Nikephoros Vrienios, Chatoturios, of course, and Andronicus Dukas, who was levied this turn because the Roman player didn't have a choice. The, the, uh, the uh, Seljuks uh, played, they drafted uh, Imperial Rivalry in the muster phase of Autumn, and that forces the Romans to have to spend a lordship to try and muster Andronicus if he's ready. Now, the reason that's bad is because his fealty is only two, so it's kind of a waste of a lordship every turn unless you get lucky. Well, I got lucky, and uh, Andronicus is in, but you can see he's only got three militia and uh, like one cavalry and one infantry, and he's not the greatest lord in the world. You can make him good if you spend the resources on it, and I might do that now that uh, he's in play. So... I gotta put him up here, his cylinder. Actually, let's do that right now. His cylinder should go here in Constantinople. Andronicus Ducas, he's the rival of the Roman Emperor, Romanus. See how that goes. I think uh, as the Roman player, you know, I've got this really strong Imperial army right here. I think I might try and, I think I might try and come over here to Diyarbakir and uh, try, and, try and conquer it and siege it. I need to get one of my lords. I can maybe bring Chattaturios up to do that. But I wanna put some pressure on the Turks because they're not gonna be able to effectively respond. Um, and uh, should be interesting. Uh, you know, we I decided to set up the campaign game and just kind of have two players play it together, and they got through about a year's worth of play, and then we're just going to keep picking it up with anyone else who wants to demo and keep going. But a pretty interesting situation unfolding, which I like. This is the new map, by the way. I, re, I redid the map so it's a little easier to see. It kind of faded and desaturated the background. But uh, this is essentially the final layout of the locations, and I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. So hopefully uh, I'll be able to do some more coverage on this soon. Um, what else we got going on? The King is Dead, lining up here uh, behind me. There's a lot of games just about to get started for like that final game of the night. It looks like uh, this group over here is about to play Thunder Alley, which I've never played, but I've always wanted to. I might join in with them. Um, and otherwise, that's kind of what's going on here on day three, Friday. Yeah, day three of the convention. Really my fourth day if you count Tuesday night. So um, having a lot of fun tomorrow. We're going to be doing some more Seljuk. I'm going to be playing some great campaigns in the American Civil War. Very excited for that. And on Sunday, we're going to play some Hollenspiel games. So, you know, hope you're enjoying the coverage and uh, we'll uh, check in with you tomorrow.